Hey everybody, I'd like to welcome you out to the executive training call this uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, it's been a beautiful month of July. We're having a lot of uh, people joining on, on the company with the uh, Freedom to Succeed or Freedom to Exceed uh, Major League Pack. Uh, welcome out to the call. Welcome out to the training. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys uh, throughout the different events that we have going on and different meetings that we're holding. Um, my name is Joshua Fair. I'm the Director of Compensation over at uh, Exceed Health. For those of you who don't know me, um, I've been in the industry now for about 15 years. For the last eight of that, I've been designing compensation plans and teaching and training and seasoning, developing, creating training systems for distributors, helping network marketing companies launch from scratch. Uh, and doing a lot of things. I, I've been able to, over the past uh, eight years, because of that, uh, rub shoulders with some of the most successful networkers in the network marketing industry. Uh, and I've also been able to, you know, learn firsthand from some of the most successful people in the world when it comes to network marketing, when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to getting your goals, earning the income that you want to earn, creating a culture, building teams, uh, duplication, and, and the different things that make a successful run at network marketing. And I always, I always talk to people about the simple things because it really is simple, this industry. It can be tough at times. It can be very, very hard work. Uh, it can be very repetitive. It can uh, dull our senses a little bit if we're not prepared and haven't, don't have the right ingredients put together in the beginning. Uh, but that being said, it's also one of the most rewarding industries uh, in the world. And, and if not necessarily for the income, I mean, obviously that's one of the reasons that we do what we do, but also the education education that I've acquired over the last 15 years in the network marketing industry by far and above um, far outweighs any time investment, financial investment, emotional or other investment that, that I could have given. Uh, because I've learned how to become an entrepreneur, I've learned how to achieve freedom, I've learned how to go out and get my goals, and I've learned how to, more importantly, teach those skills, teach those habits and mindsets to other people. See, I believe in a, a philosophy, a lot of you have probably heard of the philosophy of uh, teach, uh, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, you, you feed him for life. I, I agree with that, however, I always extend it one step further. You, you give a man a fish, you you feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish, you feed him for life, you teach him how to teach others and you feed the world. And I think that that's uh, very, very, very important as we look at the status of the world today and, and we look at where we're at, you know, the, the collective mindset of the world, everything that's going on right now is, is a reflection of the collective mindset of the world. And there's a whole bunch of hunger going on. There's poverty. There's war. There's, there's different things. And that kind of goes to show where most people's mindsets are at right now. So tonight I wanted to talk to something, uh, talk about something that's very, very important that will help you guys build your businesses. Uh, I promise you I only do about 15-minute calls, 10, 15-minute calls because I don't like long conference calls. I like to keep it short, sweet, to the point and get you the information that's going to impact your life and, and move you forward in the business. So that being said, I'm always talking about uh, a couple of key ingredients uh, with regard to building a network marketing company. One of them is the number one skill set of a network marketer and it's inviting. And we're not going to talk about that tonight, but it's, it's one of the key ingredients. I believe that it is not necessary to know how to present, to close, to overcome objections, to teach, to train, to season, to develop. As long as you have leaders in your network marketing upline that can do that, those skills can be developed over time. The one that your leader can't do for you, the only one that your leader can't do for you, is invite your people to a meeting. That's something that a networker has to learn how to do and has to be professional about. Uh, you have to go about it professionally. Another key is the key discipline, the number one discipline of a network marketer. And this one, we're not, again, I'm, I'm just going to briefly touch it because it's not the one that I want to talk about tonight. But the, the number one discipline of a network marketer is, is one of the toughest ones. Yet the people that have done this successfully are the ones that are making six figures to seven figures a month or a year in the industry. Matter of fact, the only difference between a six-figure earner in this industry and a non-six-figure earner is that the six-figure earner in this industry uses this, uh, this uh, discipline. And they do it for a period of at least 90 days, and they go all out with it. Now, the only difference between a seven-figure earner and a six-figure earner is a seven-figure earner has done it more than once. Now, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the discipline of being able to schedule out a section of time in your day, every single day, 
in which you will dedicate to do nothing but revenue producing activities. And I'm not talking about creating documents for other people to understand the compensation model. I'm not talking about, you know, creating charts or presentation flip charts or banners or any of these other things. I'm talking about the one skill set that I just mentioned, which is inviting. Inviting is your revenue producing activity. If you don't have uh, buns in the seats, like we say in the industry, you don't have a chance of, of getting somebody in your business. You also don't have a chance of getting somebody uh, to purchase products. If you have a tasting experience and there's no new people there, you're not making money. And so it's, it's setting aside a certain amount of time, whether that's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, an hour. Uh, just so that you guys are aware, I have never once ever seen somebody work 40 hours a week doing nothing but revenue producing uh, activities. Uh, revenue producing activities, meaning sitting down with your phone list in front of you, getting out your phone and dialing and talking to people with the intent of inviting them to the next presentation and not stopping until the time is up. I've never once ever seen somebody go through even an eight hour day of doing nothing but that. Because what I found is people typically get burnt out of after even two hours of it. And so choose, though, a certain amount of time that you can specifically dedicate and consecrate to the business and doing revenue-producing activities, not just busy work, not just, oh, I'm going to read this or I'm going to study this or I'm going to learn about this product. No, it's actual inviting people. It's stepping up to the plate. Uh, turning off Facebook, turning off Gmail, turning off everything that could uh, possibly distract you, CNN, CBS, TNT, F, FBC, or, or, you know, or whatever they are, or any of the other three-letter swear words that exist out there, uh, it's, it's turning them off. And it's sitting down with your list and picking up a phone and dialing. And dialing until the time is up whether it be five minutes, ten minutes, an hour, a half an hour, and stating to your loved ones, your wife, your, your husband, your significant other, your kids, uh, hey, look, for the next whatever time it is you've chosen, I don't, I don't exist. Don't text me. Don't, don't talk to me. Don't knock on the door. Unless the, the house is burning down and it's emergency, I don't exist. I just pretend like I'm working and I'm in another city. Now, there's two benefits. I, I know a lot of people say that that's a little harsh, but the reality is that's what the people who make six figures in this industry do. Now, it does one thing that is amazing for you. If you're able to separate and, and consecrate a certain amount of time every single day for your business, that means outside of that time you can forget about business and spend your time doing the things that are more important to you, i.e. being with your family, church and charity service to the community, education, travel, you know, the things that are really important, the things for which you, you, you thrive, the things that cause you to have joy in your life. Those are the things that you should be spending your time on, and that allows you, you know, as, as a husband, you know, somebody who's been in this industry, I remember times where I would go to work, and then I would go to work. And I would go to work, and then I'd go to work. And there was no time for wife. There was no time for kids. There was no time for anything. And that's not the appropriate way to do it. And what ended up happening, happening is wife gets burnt out. She gets upset. I get upset because the wife is upset. And no one's happy. Everyone's miserable. And no one's living their true life purpose. And so I learned this from some of the most successful people in the industry, the ability to take a half an hour a day and say, during this half an hour a day, I don't exist, my dearest love. Don't, don't call me. Don't text me. Don't try to poke me on Facebook. I, I'm doing business right now for the next half an hour. But at the same time, what that allows me to do is once that half an hour is done, I can put business aside and tell my team, hey, unless it's absolutely an emergency, don't call me because for the next two hours, I'm with my kids. See, that's, that's an amazing ability to be able to do that, be able to section off the time and be able to have that priority set. Now, but what it does is it disciplines you to do revenue producing activities on a daily basis and that's what creates success over a long term. It's the creation of a ratio. When you do things often enough, a ratio appears, Jim Rohn used to always say. And you do it often enough, a ratio appears. And by the ratio, when you finally have a ratio that appears, you can then go out and get any goal that you want to.
you can win any competition that you want to. Uh, because here's the fact, if, if I know how to close one out of ten people, and you know how to close nine out of ten people, but you don't know your ratios, I will beat you in any competition that we ever do. Because you will go out and talk to ten people, and you'll get nine, and I'll go out and talk to a hundred people so that I can beat you because I know my ratios. So that's what that's, that, that key discipline gives you. Now, the one that I really wanted to talk about, and it's only going to take about five minutes, folks, and we'll wrap up the call, is the number one habit of a network marketer. And a lot of people wouldn't think of this as a habit, but it really is. I, I want to go to the definition of, of habit. A habit is a routine behavior that is repeated regularly and tends to occur unconsciously. Okay. Now, what is the habit that I'm talking about, the number one habit of a network marketer? The number one habit of a network marketer is the habit of giving value and serving others. Zig Ziglar used to say it best when he said, help other people, help a lot of people get what they want, and eventually you're going to get what you want. We, we have a lack of this right now in the nation, in the world. We have a lack of going out of our way to help other people. We have a lack of going to help other people and serving other people without expecting something in return. You know, and that's that's quite unfortunate. And here's the reason. You know, I was talking to somebody in the downline in the in the company, and he expressed a concern. And his concern was, you know, I'm out there, I'm recruiting, I'm talking to a lot of people, but the problem is, is that the people that I'm getting. I, I just feel like I have to chase them around all the time. I just feel like it's not it's not going to be you know the, I have to I have to search and hunt and find and fight to find the ones that are you know the same mindset you know and a lot of that has nothing to do with the person, but it has to do with the way the relationship was formed. If we just go in talking about business, it's a very insincere way to way to do things. And what I've told people is, is if you can get in the habit of constantly going out of your way to find the people who are in a less fortunate circumstance than you and help them, find a way to serve them, your net worth will increase. Uh, what it does is it creates a feeling of reciprocity, whether you mean it to or not, it creates a feeling of reciprocity um, of the person that you're serving. So you do this often enough and it becomes something that's in unconscious, it's something you don't think about, it's just something that you automatically do. You see somebody, for example, that's struggling to get off a bus. You make sure that the bus driver knows, hey, hold on just a second, we got somebody that needs some help, you know, and, and you help them get off. Uh, you know, I had a chance the other day and, and I thought about it later and I'm like, wow, somebody else probably would have maybe even gotten scared or angry with me, but I saw a, a, a lovely woman on the bus that was trying to get off the bus. She had a stroller in one hand, shopping bags in the other, and she had a child that was probably two and a half that was walking. Now, I don't know about you guys, but you guys that maybe have been on buses know that uh, the drop-off off of a bus for a two-and-a-half-year-old is, is quite a big thing. And so as she was struggling, obviously, to get off the bus without even thinking, without even hesitating, because I have kids, I reached down real quick and grabbed the kid's hand and helped them get off the bus so that I could help her. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been able to do it. And, and it's those things that when you start doing those things to your friends, start doing those things to your family members, start doing those things to everybody that you encounter, that's when you're going to start having a more favorable response when you try to talk to them about business. And it is a habit. If you look at traditionally the number one network marketers in the history of the world, and you get to rub shoulders with them, you will know that they are some of the most generous, some of the most kind people. Now, obviously, that's not all of them, and there are exceptions to the rule. But on the whole, the, the people that I have seen that have the most success in network marketing are the ones that, that give, the ones that give value, the ones that take a little extra time. For example, the ones that sign someone up, and then go over to their house and make sure that they have no questions, make sure that their ship is set up correctly, make sure that they know when the next training call is, get them started on their list, get them to write down their goals and dreams. They spend a little bit more time with them. 
So this is a habit, and I think it's the number one most important habit of a network marketer. We've got a skill set now, we've got a discipline, and we've got a habit. Folks, we're going to start, uh, just so that you guys are aware, starting next week I will be doing the Wednesday trainings. Uh, we're going to start modularizing them and then making the content available online. Uh, we will be doing it webinar style as well for those that want to get on uh, the computer and see the different slides that I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, and different things and then we will record those and put them into the back office as we go along. Um, folks, what it really is, it boils down to is this. There's a story here of, of two uh, tadpoles. And these two tadpoles, they hatch from the same batch of eggs. And they swam around, uh, swam around excitedly, wagging their tails with great enthusiasm. And they swam up to their mother and they said, hey, look what we can do, look what we can do. And the mother frog looked at the two tadpoles with, with a bunch of pride. And she said, hey, come here real quick. And she said, what you're going to go through over the next little bit is a change. And in that change, you're eventually going to lose your tail and you're going to grow some legs. Now, that news impacted the tadpoles differently. One was very, very excited about the future, and he continued to swim with a whole bunch of energy and enthusiasm, occasionally looking back to see if his legs had started forming. The other one, however, he said, what's the point in exercising my tail? It's only going to drop off eventually anyway. As a result, the first brother kept strengthening his tail, but not only his tail, he was strengthening his stamina, strengthening his body. Uh, it, and, and, and his brother, on the other, uh, other hand, started getting weaker. So when it came time for the tail to go away and, and the powerful legs of a frog to start forming in the back, the first one was able to survive much easier because he had built very, very powerful muscles in his lower back towards the tail region. So when those legs came in, they came in full and he was able to jump. And he was able to jump farther and higher than his brother was. Now. Just just bringing that back and, and making a parallel with it, folks, those people that will adapt this habit of going out and, and serving and loving and giving value out to those that surround you, you're going to build muscles that you didn't know you had. You're going to build character. You're going to build value in the eyes of, of your fellow man, and you're going to build a following. You're going to build a likable personality where people want to be around you. Not only do they want to be around you, they want to be a part of whatever you're a part of. Be that business, be that religion, be it charitable works, be it education, be it a club, be it a, a community. Whatever it is that you're a part of, they're going to want to be a part of that as well. So with that, folks, have a beautiful evening. Go out and have a awesome weekend. This is the end of the month push as the, the month for commissions ends this Sunday night at midnight. So those of you who are close to a rink, uh, make sure that you uh, get in and, and, and find out how much volume you need and let's make a push for the end of the week. Those of you who aren't sure, you can send me an email to Joshua P at exceedhealth.com. That's J-O-S-H-U-A P as in Peter at exceedhealth.com and I would, I would be more than happy to look over where you're at who you've got, who's active, who's inactive, what the volume is, and tell you exactly what you need to do to get to the next rank. So with that, folks, have a beautiful night. Talk to you later, and uh, we'll see you on the next call.